Dear students, in this module, we're going to see how to use peptide sequence tags in searching the protein in the sample. You know that peptide sequence tags give you partial subsequences of the bigger protein or peptide. So these, in effect, are just clues for you, and you can search for these clues within the entire sequence of the protein. And of course, you can do this process for multiple proteins. So in your database, in your protein sequence database, you will have hundreds of thousands of proteins. So you just take a peptide sequence tag and you take one protein from the database at a time and you scan this peptide sequence tag within the sequence of that protein. And if the protein contains that peptide sequence tag, it will become your candidate protein. So you store that protein and you go back to the database, you take the next protein, you repeat the same process, you scan the peptide sequence tag from the sequence of this protein. And if it also reports the peptide sequence tag, you add it to the candidate protein list as well and you continue processing the entire protein sequence database to search for these clues. So in effect, all of the clues are peptide sequence tags, but the protein in question or the peptide in question that was there in your sample may not be reporting all of them. Why? Because there is a chance that some peptide sequence tag is formed just by chance. And moreover, there are a few amino acids that have an equal mass. So, you cannot be sure which amino acid is it or which amino acid is it not. So, let's see. How do we incorporate this process, the entire search process, into the peptide sequence tag search? So, let's take a look at the example that we are following. We have the following peptide sequence tags that were reported. And now, we would want to search them in the protein sequence database. There are multiple protein sequence databases that are available online. And you can try to choose the one which you prefer. Below, I have listed a sample sequence from Uniprot. And you can see here, session numbers, the description of this protein. And here, you have the sequence of the entire protein. Of course, in the protein database, you will have many such entries and the database may just contain over a million proteins in case of Uniprot. So, what you do is, you just compare each peptide sequence tag with the protein sequence. If the protein sequence reports these peptide sequence tags, then it becomes a candidate protein. So let's search for M in this protein. Yes, we have found an M and of course it is the first amino acid. How about MQ? Not yet. We have a QV. So QV has been found as well within the same protein. And yes, we have found an MQ as well. So this protein reports all of these peptide sequence tags and therefore is a very strong candidate protein. In this way, you can compare the strings or the sequence of the protein and the peptide sequence tags and you can arrive at the number of matches for each protein. The protein which has the most number of matches will of course be the most probable. So we have to repeat this process over and over again that is for all the proteins in the protein sequence database. We have to look at each peptide sequence tag in each protein in the protein database and talk about its comparison. So of course there can be a situation where multiple proteins have these peptide sequence tags. More so the proteins that are reporting these peptides can be candidates or they can be false positives as well. Moreover, 
what if several proteins report these PSTs and what if smaller length PSTs are reported by many proteins and one very big or long PST is reported by a few proteins. So in this situation it becomes necessary that we are able to rank the candidate proteins. For that different scoring schemes are available and we'll talk about them later. So in conclusion, we have extracted the peptide sequence tags from the MS2 data. We have compared them with the uh, protein sequences in the protein sequence databases and we have counted how many PSTs are there in each of the proteins. So if a protein contains these PSTs, then it is called a candidate protein.